All right, so welcome back to the channel. My name's Kevin. I'm Tarsha. This is Conversations with the Crawleys. We do conversations about faith, family, relationships, and we do recaps, reviews, and commentaries of our favorite shows. This one is all about, we finally at the finale, recap, reunion, whatever it was that happened, and we'll talk about all the craziness that happened. That happened? That happened. That happened. From Ready to Love, <laughs> see in Dallas. So this is content that you enjoy. You know what to do by now. Hit the subscribe, hit the like, request notification. And share. We'll see you in the comments. Consider becoming a member and checking out the merch store. So I don't have a saxophone to play, but we'll we'll talk about that saxophone a little later. Oh, Jesus. So anyway, of course, it is the finale, the, excuse me, the recap, the reunion, I should say. Yeah, of, it's the reunion. It's the reunion. Yeah. It's the reunion. They're having a reunion. They start off with the recap of Tommy and his curveballs, which aren't curveballs now. These are just. They typically happen. Right. So um, we have basically, the, the, they use it as a way to pivot to talk to Kat. Mm -hmm. Right, because Cat came in late as one of Tommy's curveballs. Mm -hmm. They were like, Chris, how'd you feel? He was like, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Okay, get off the stage. Let's talk to Cat. Um, and so we did see a never before seen footage of Marie with Cat. Mm -hmm. So the first one we see where they're, he's kind of like, you know, I feel like a good connection with you, good relationship, da da da. And then because we know that Marie chose Jessica at the finale, um, we did at least see him have the conversation with Kat of their relationship, right? And she says she had been in the hospital. I went back and watched it. She had been in the hospital all night with her dog. Oh, I thought she said her it's a, dad. It's not like dad, but yeah, it was her dog. Because also, I'm like, if if I'm all night in the hospital with my dad, I'm not coming to a, a, a show just to be booted off or what have you. I could care less at that point if my dad's in the hospital in the ER. But it was her dog, so... I don't I don't know how you're in the hospital all night with a dog. They don't normally let you stay. Okay. All right. Maybe in Atlanta. I mean in Dallas they and do they that. Will, yeah. They let you be by the dog's cage side. Mm -mm. Cuz when our dog was sick, we we took had him, to drop, him, him, drop off. him off. Well, part of that was that partly also because of COVID. Oh, it was because of COVID. I think that might have been because of COVID. Too. Maybe so that's what it was. It's possible. It's possible. But either way, she was with her dog. And so she was a little emotional because of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then she was getting dumped by Marie. Was she really getting dumped? She was getting, give us free. She was gone. I think she, as we were seeing, she was trying to make connections mm -hmm. and stay afloat in this season. And yeah, I don't know if they really had a connection or not. Like they, like Marie said, I think they were, more friends than anything throughout. Well, no, because he did say, because remember, first of all, her first connections were Herbert and Phil, right? That's true. Because she said Herbert was, you know, a man's man, uh, grown, gave grown man energy, mm -hmm. right? Um, but then he was, you know, soft and, and what she needed mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, and then with Phil, she just said it was, you know, the main thing for both of them was that they they weren't pursuing her the way she wanted to be pursued. Mm -hmm. And so Marie was like, yeah, timing is what really stood in their way. Hmm. To which y'all saw the behind the or backstage, Jessica was like, oh, oh that's what it was. Mm -hmm. So, and in fact, Quentin said the same thing. Quentin was like, yeah, she just came late. And Janelle was like, oh, I, now you know why you wanted, I wanted to show up at your apartment. Well, she only came, they only had three events. No. So it was, it was like a week, right? It was. They had two events basically. So they had the the original mixer, she then they had there. the brunch, and she wasn't there. And then the next event was them showing up. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So they only had three events. They missed two events, right? So they I'm came like on the third. So so she wasn't that far behind. No. Now, no. granted, yeah. Did you meet some people that you you liked? But she was in the mix. She was. So they acting like she came back like 60 days after it started. Whatever. They weren't interested in that girl like that. So, um, but yeah, that was pretty much it for them. Mm -hmm. um, again, Jessica and Janelle both had the stank face because I don't know if either one of their relationships are real. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah. We, got, we, got, we got a lot to talk about with this one. All right. Um, so then we have the thought job. Uh, scandal. Scandal. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so Red, Unique, 
Kira, Chris, Janelle, and Quentin are all on the couches with Tommy. And they do the whole recap of the thought job comment. Um, and so um, we get another never before seen clip. And some of these never before seen clips probably should have made it in some over some of the other clips that they already had in there. Thank you. Um, but Quentin, you know, but we see it looks like at the brunch where Red is sitting at a table with Quentin and with Unique. And he makes a comment about his thought job. And Quentin's like, oh, they call my job a thought job, too. Mm-hmm. So now it doesn't sound like Unique called it that. No. But I guess, is that a Dallas thing? Because or maybe it's, we're not in the right age bracket. Because I've never heard somebody talk about somebody's job like a thought job. I, I've never heard anybody talk about their job like a thought job. I've heard the word thought. But not necessarily the job... But when she explained it, because they asked her to explain it, right? it makes sense. I get what she's saying. I get what she's saying. You get an opportunity to be around people of the opposite sex, which you have more opportunities for hookups. Okay. But to me, Red just blew it all out of proportion. He So. I feel like he did. I Because I, it could have been dead. So I get it. I get it from both perspectives. I get that if I'm just meeting you yeah. and I'm telling you what I do, what have you, sure. and you sound like you're dismissing me because of what I do and you put it into the category of a thought job, that's something that if if I get what she's saying and that's something that maybe down the road you're like, yo, I really thought you had a thought job or, mm-hmm. you know, you got a thought, you know, you got a thought. But that's something you might joking. say in joking or yeah. jest, but I haven't built up the connection with you to that's joke true. and jest that way. That's true. Right? She, she could have hold on to that joke. Oh, yeah, it, it, Keep it in her bag. Yeah. Save for later. Right. <laughs> Not bring it out first conversation we have. Um, <laughs> so she does define it. Red got some thought job t-shirts. He's like, I put it on my website and start to try to give his website. And she's like, oh, I'm talking over it. You might want to give it again. He's like, they got it. No, we didn't get it. No, we didn't get it. And we don't want it. No, no, thank you. Mm-mm. And just because people say something, it's not always a good T-shirt idea. Not everything is a t- T-shirt idea. Not everything, right? no. Because I did find it. I did check it out. Did you actually I did find it, it Just because I'm like, okay, I want to see what you did. put it in for the people so they can see what it looks like. No, because it it looked like he did. He, he, okay. Did he write it in crayon and put it in Almost. <laughs> almost. I don't know what font he used, but it was just like. It said what font. And it says it's like it's you see thought job, but it's like the font is like a little different, right? <laughs> and then underneath it's like he tries to define what thought jobs are, but it's it's like no. If it's, you gotta define a t-shirt, don't don't do a t-shirt. That don't. Mm-mm. By the way, check out our merch store. Yes. <laughs> check out our merch store. Um. So, but then unique, she starts hinting. She's like, "Well, I'd have heard some stuff," and everybody's like, "What? What did you hear?" Quinn's like, don't be saying you heard stuff if you're not going to put it out there. Mm-hmm. So she's like, I heard about how he does with his kids and his ex-wife. And so then it's like, okay, one, you didn't need to bring that up. Because A, and Janelle, Janelle, here's the thing. Janelle was the voice of reason in this segment. I don't know about the rest of the time. But in this segment, she was the voice of reason. She's like, I think the kids should be off limits. And Tommy mm-hmm. was like, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. He's like, because the, they, she was like, because the kids and the ex-wife are innocent and all this. They they are their background characters, if you will, not to say that they're background people, but they're not central to this story. Well, and my thing is this. If you're concerned about that because you were talking about being in a relationship with him, mm-hmm. then that's something you would address with him. Right. Not kind of just putting out there these hints of, who his character is and not, you know, I just didn't feel like any of it was necessary. Not at all. I feel like she was trying to create drama when there was no drama. She was trying to create her storyline. Oh. So, um, but then, (laughs) you know, Tommy's like, so Red, what's going on with you? Red's like, well, you know, I'm still talking with my girl Janelle. Me and Kira still hang out every now and then. And and I think he said Tequila too, was it? Did he say Tequila? It was oh, a third it was person. Two. Was it a third person? Maybe it was, uh, maybe I let us know because I thought there was a third person. I thought there was only two. But when he said Janelle, Quentin's like, Oh, we doing that? <laughs> and Janelle's like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Uh, you know what that means. Hmm. That ain't for real. 
So, uh, <laughs> they ain't for real. They ain't for real. None of these couples' issues for real at all. Um, so that was pretty much it for them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then we now get to Jessica and Marie and their story. And we have the whole recap of their journey. Mm -hmm. And then Tommy's talking with them. And uh, it was Red, because I had to go back and watch who said it. Red back, Red backstage was like, it ain't real, y'all. I don't know. This cast, boy, they are something <laughs> else. Now, granted, I didn't feel any closeness. I didn't feel any connection between the two of them. Mm -mm. So I'm doubting that they're actually together. Now, they indicated they were courting. She said they were dating. I think he said court. Somebody said the word courting. Okay. Because that's the only reason why I'm saying that. Maybe it was Marie. So, and I'm like, okay, but y'all act like y'all never, ever been on a date. Because... <laughs> She says that what made Marie stand out was that he was consistent, right? Mm -hmm. Or excuse me. Yeah. So she said that Marie was consistent. Mm -hmm. So Tommy was like, okay, well, what made Marie separate himself from the other guys? And it was like, okay, um, y'all hear me, right? <laughs> separate? Separate? What do you mean? And everybody in the back like, what's wrong with her? <laughs> what's wrong with her? Because, again, they didn't plan for that in their script. They didn't script out those responses for themselves. So Kat and Sierra were both giving each other the side eye. Kat was like, or Sierra was like, I'm foaming at the mouth at this right now. And everybody's looking at it like, it ain't. It, it can't be. Y'all ain't together. There was, so we've, we've seen couples, you know, in previous seasons. Mm -hmm. And just couples, period. Mm -hmm. Where if there's a connection, there's there's a body language that comes off. It does. Their body language is so dissociated from each other. It's like it's mm. like yeah. Last time y'all been out was at was, the lake, yeah, wherever where he gave, gave it you it that the, the lilies, whatever you what gave. What kind her. of those flowers? Yeah. So we don't mm -hmm. believe you. Sorry, Marianne and Jessica. You, we don't believe y'all. Mm -hmm. uh, the next was, and I forgot he. I forget. I was so caught up. You see, y'all know I was in watching this. I was thinking the same thing. The dude in the middle. What dude? The guy. I forgot. There was this one guy. And I was like, I don't even remember this dude's name. I think he was Oh, that was there. Brandon or whatever his name yeah. was? Yeah. Yeah, he was there. We A haven't really heard from him. Yeah, he was the one that had. Everybody was mad because he had been divorced twice, but from his second, his yes, first wife. Okay. I don't even forgot the dude's name. Right. Uh, but then now we switch his segments and they go to and again I was I was so caught up in my disdain for Chris mm -hmm. and his mama's portrait hiding behind the couch that I forgot what a mess Habibi was. How you forget Habibi was a mess? Because because Ooh. out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> no, you can't forget that. And I was quickly reminded of what a mess he was. Right? You can't you can't forget that because what he did to Janelle. Yes. And. I don't think because since BB is a different thinker, he's not a deep thinker. As I said, different. I didn't Tequila, say deeper. Tequila said he's a he's he thinks so deep. I'm like, okay. I, I said different. I did say different. Yes. Um, that I don't believe they should have even did that segment. Um, because he couldn't put things together. He couldn't understand. What he did and what he did was inappropriate, and for <laughs> for for Janelle to sit there, I understand why she was upset because you don't want to feel anybody viol violating you or disrespecting you, right? Or disrespecting you, and so for him not <laughs> to be able to really comprehend what happened is just very disappointing. Yeah, because he apologizes but doesn't feel that he is the person who would say those things. But you did. We'll we'll let that stand for a moment. Y'all y'all figured that out. Because it didn't make it doesn't make sense what you're saying, and you did it. So <sighs> just apologize for doing it. Yeah. Now Janelle was like he didn't apologize. He did apologize. He just don't know what he was apologizing for. Correct. And it wasn't the best apology. No. It was it was an apology of if I offended you, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And that's not an apology. No. Right. No. That's that's just simply making a statement. That's a conditional Correct. statement. Correct. 
if I'm apologizing, I apologize. Whether I offended you or not, I recognize the wrong in what I mm-hmm. did. So I'm apologizing for what I did. If it meant something to you or didn't mean something to you, I recognize my wrong. So, um, because Janelle asks, why are we counseling a grown man to behave? Um, Because he he may, yeah, he may have some disability. I don't know. It just don't seem like he had everything together. He can function, but I think there might be something missing. He might have a few of them rocks that that uh, Mario is trying to give away a few of those rocks in his head. Cause I don't know, but I was, it was very unfortunate. So Janelle walks off. She's yeah. like, okay, I can't do this. She She's walks upset. off. Mm-hmm. Habibi starts to follow her. And they shouldn't, and, and she shouldn't have to tell the producers. Right. Have them, please don't have them follow him. Right. She's, she, she's like trying to make her exit away from mm-hmm. him. He's continuing. Cameras are following, mm-hmm. but producers are not standing in the way, stopping it, what have mm-hmm. you. Until finally, she said, can you tell him to stop following me? And now here's the part that I'm looking at. Who went to who, to uh, comfort her? It wasn't Quentin. It wasn't. It was Herbert. It was Herbert. Herbert ran, or not mm-hmm. ran, but not ran. he at he least went to, went to comfort her, right? Mm-hmm. I'm thinking that if if this is my person, if this is my boo, I'm be the first one. Like I and, got it. And crazy crackhead with a turban on, I got starts it. coming after my girl. That's true. I would have stopped him first before anything else. That's right. true. Because because as Habibi is saying all these things, you see the reactions from the cast, and mm-hmm. they're like, "Oh my goodness, you really said this?" Uh, mm-hmm. So they're hearing what's going on. Right. They're able to watch what's going right. on. So the fact that Quentin was not there, right, speaks volumes to me. Right. So right. Um. So then. After that, we go back, and Habibi's back on stage, and then starts playing his sax. Now, here's the thing I don't understand, and help me, because maybe, I, ladies, help me understand. <laughs> Does a man playing the saxophone have that much of a hold on you, where it's just like, that's like, oh, that's my guy because he plays the saxophone? Because he's making it seem like men that play the saxophone are just like the best men ever. I don't I don't know. I don't know if he was trying to promote himself. It was awkward. I feel like it was out of place. No one asked for it. It was crazy. And so for you to be doing this at this time, I don't think it's necessary. I'd be like, bro, go ahead and pack that up. Yeah. Go put it away, man. Because why didn't Tommy be like, if you don't get Joe? <laughs> I, I'd be like, go ahead, Yo, pack it up. Pied Piper wanting to be behind he out of the Pied stage. Piper. So, yeah, he played his sax. It was like, okay. Yeah. All right. So then next we have Marvin, mm-hmm. his segment. Mm-hmm. So Unique, Janelle, Herbert, Lee, and Kat are all, all on the stage mm-hmm. with them, right? And Tommy's like, okay, bro, look, how, how are you so comfortable sharing this information? And he's mm-hmm. like, because it's who I am. So I can appreciate oh, yeah. the honesty of this is what I want. This is what I'm looking for. And he's basically was like, if you if you can't, it's better that you know it up front than find out six months down the road when it, I bo- uh, pull out some some tools and some weapons. And uh, it wasn't going to happen in six months. The way his sex drive is, <laughs> it was going to happen in two or three days. Yeah. If he gave you two or three days. Yeah. But maybe for him, because we were saying this throughout the season, why is he here? Mm-hmm. If you have a certain way... Um, or a sexual preference in the sense of, you know, it's different. Right. So, and you're not around the people in that kind of community. Mm -hmm. And so I think maybe that helped him maybe see someone in his community because he said he did find someone. Yeah. Even though Unique, she wants to dabble. Unique was, Unique sounded like she was down. She said she's dabbling. That's what she said. She didn't say that. Please forgive me. She did not say that. She didn't say it out of her mouth. But she insinuates that she's dabbling. Because she did go to one of his events. Right. And she likes the wax. Yes. Part of the event. It's hot. So. And when Tommy pulled out the little, uh, the strap and the, the tickler, she's like, hey, Tommy, let me, let me, is that, is that good? Yeah, let me, let me see that. Tom. Oh, oh, yeah, that's that. That's that good stuff right there. That's really what she was doing. I don't know, but I was just like, <laughs> yeah. If anyone's going to end up having a show, is the him going to have it at 
late night, midnight BET special. BET Uncut. <laughs> he don't want to go get the deal out of everybody. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, my God. But, yeah, so there is no connection or nothing progressed with Marvin and Unique, mm-hmm. although she don't sound like she's, like, uh, she's giving up. Correct. She might stalk some of his shows some more. Because she just sound upset that he was dating someone. Because he said a girlfriend. I was like, hold on, were you going to be number two or? Three. Or five. So, okay. Um, so that was enough for them. Mm-hmm. Then we have the Tequila segment. Mm-hmm. All right. So you got Tequila, Habibi, Janelle, Unique, and Philip all on the couch. Mm-hmm. And... Tequila says that, you know, she got the softer side of Habibi. Mm-hmm. And all while she's talking and doing all this stuff, Philip is looking like, what in the world are you talking about? Red in the back was like, okay, we got crazy meeting crazy because Tequila and Habibi still hang out. Mm-hmm. They still have a friendship of some sorts, mm-hmm. what have you. Yeah. Um, and just the way, again, she's the one that said that he's a deep thinker. But when she doesn't think deep, herself anyone who thinks a little deeper than you is a deep thinker but to the rest of us it's like puddle after a quick rainstorm you know i'm glad they found each other and they can have a friendship and they taking each other out the out the dating pool i'm sure the i rest don't know of Dallas, i don't i don't think that's, true. Correct. that's correct i don't okay. think they're taking each other out of the dating pool i'll give you that yes um but they have an understanding. So, like, everybody got their group of people. <laughs> because... They, they found their click. Yes. Because Tommy was asking her, so what about some of the things that he did to some of the other women? And she says she didn't see any of those clips or knew of the actions or why the women felt a certain way about him. Mm-hmm. But my thing is... Why didn't you try to get an understanding? Because she was what she was trying to paint about Janelle is like Janelle was like, at one point, we need to uplift our black men, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then she was trying to come down on her for like, now we're in the ladies lounge. And now you're saying all these things about him. So I can get her perspective. But you go from zero to 200 and willing to put you physically put hands on someone that could physically put you in jail, I feel like that's a problem. Well, I can I can understand and I, I applaud the the desire to make sure that we protect black men and black women. Absolutely. Right? However, if Janelle is in the ladies' lounge saying this is a person that comes off predatory mm-hmm. and isn't protecting black women, mm-hmm. but more of um, um, offending, whatever you want to say, mm-hmm. That's that. That's not. I'm not protecting a black man. Mm-hmm. I'm giving you a heads up about that black man. Right. We can protect the other ones. She, she notice Janelle's not bringing up anything about right. Um, or none of the ladies were bringing up as far as let's say for example Phillips bankruptcy. Right? right. That's protecting a black man because yes, we all have things happen. What happened? But she brought it up. Tequila brought it up, right? Right. Because like, she's so intent on protecting black men, but. Not really. My thing is like, why are you trying to hurt him by putting his airing out of his dirty law right. laundry? Right. I'm like, what is going on here? He was <laughs> like, yeah, you are proof positive of why I do not want to date you. He's like, you're immature. Mm-hmm. And Just, he stated it. Yes. Quickly. Um, because she's she says that broke energy makes her feel uncomfortable. He's like, look, I was I was doing real estate, and mm-hmm. if you remember 2007, 2008. 2009, lots of things shifted in the housing market. And he, what he's saying makes sense. Absolutely. So him um, declaring bankruptcy during that time makes sense. Yes. I I think, was I getting, I, I think it was right when I was getting, I was trying to get involved with real estate mm-hmm. investing. Mm-hmm. And I had an investor that flipped out or that went out on mm-hmm. me on a deal because it was happening with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Right. So I get what he's, I get the mm-hmm. reason why it's not like, that's an issue that shows that he's unstable. Now, there's other things that we don't know about. Don't know that. But to bring that up, 
It wasn't necessary. Baby girl, you don't move in them type of circles where that would be an option because you are doing those type of investments. Well, and also, um, let's look at it this way. Since I've been kind of the last couple of episodes, his Mm storyline, I wonder if she was trying to keep herself in the mix of that storyline. Yeah. Because other than that, there's no, it wasn't necessary for her to say that at all. all. Mm -mm. Nobody was looking for that. No. Um, And then she does throw shade at Jessica and Janelle also, who Mm -hmm. like really just catching strays because they sitting there. They're like, I'm not going to engage with this crazy woman. Her medication has not been refilled yet. So they're like, we're not going to touch it or talk well, about it. Well, they said there's no beef between them or whatever. You know, I'm just like, then it is what it is. Right. But don't look at her funny. Don't say anything. If you know this lady can be easily triggered, leave her alone. And it looks like next week. Janelle does say something, or she said no, it at she the said end. It. She said she it said at, at the end, end but it's, it's leading up to what we see. It leads we'll up see to next the thing because Be- she does say something about somebody's fle- feathers over here. Yeah, see, <laughs> and Janelle don't want that smoke. See, she ain't running up on Instagram up in her house and where she live. She don't want that smoke because <laughs> Janelle said, "Oh, did you bring what you said you were going to bring?" I said that lady could have her piece in her car. So yeah, because. Because Janelle is, I don't, I don't want to use the term aggressive or what have you, right? But Janelle can, Janelle strikes me as someone that, if it comes to a fight, she's, she's not backing down, right? But Tequila fi- comes off as someone that, even I don't care how well you know how to fight, Tequila just comes off as off. No, see, there's two differences here, okay? Go ahead. Peacocks. They show feathers to look uh, to look like they could be a threat, mm-hmm. but they're not. Okay. Okay. Now you mess with like a road runner or something. I hope you got your your analogy right. I don't know. I, I'm I, not fact checking in the I, middle, but I'm go not. Ahead. I'm just saying. I'm saying I one. Get what you're saying. Only thing I'm saying one presents like they're going to do something and never does anything. And there's one where you can look at them and tell, because I know the difference. You can look at them and tell, like, no, this chick, whatever she's about to say and do, she's about to do it. She's going to activate it. Yes. So here's the thing, the way I would put it. So (laughs) I grew up in Chicago, right? There's not a lot of of things that scare me as far as in the city. I know where to go. I know where Mm -hmm. not to go, right? Mm -hmm. Me too. Um, Not in Chicago, but in D.C. Not in, right. Right. But... I know for me, there were, when we were living in Tulsa, there were some parts of North Tulsa that frightened me, not because um, because of anything other than some people in North Tulsa are just crazy. In North Tulsa? In North Tulsa. Okay. Sometimes they would do, you know how there's crimes that make sense? <laughs> if you can say it that way, there's crimes that make sense. And then some crimes, it's like, you just dumb. you just crazy. North Tulsa would have like dumb crimes, right? <laughs> it's dumb. Because they weren't a smart criminal. Right. They were that, just they were, that scares you because they be, weren't smart. Because criminal. at least in Chicago there's a code. You know what colors you can wear. You know where you can go. That's gang violence. That's so. not no, that's just you know where you can be in Chicago. Okay, but because gangs had certain territories, correct? Yes. Okay, so that's gang violence. But in Tulsa, it's like you could be sitting on the corner minding your business, and all of a sudden you get caught up in a whole bunch of stuff, right? That's a drive-by. No, it ain't (laughs) drive-by. It it was a a bicycle buy and stuff like that. So bicycle buy. All right, on scooters. I mean, just listen. (laughs) They they would do some stupid crimes in Tulsa. Everybody does stupid crimes everywhere. No, I'm telling you. I I just feel like you know some people who are just, they just trying to act hard. But when you know people who are just crazy, like anything pops them off, like you say like blue. Talk, talk, talking about a feather? Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. That's my feather. Exactly. And it's going to be all over, all over the back, uh, backstage. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, if you know she easily triggered, why, why, why engage that? Why why poke the bear? Tequila, don't come for us. It's okay. Man. Don't come for us. I'm just telling you. She know we telling you. She's like, yep. Yeah, she Let is. it pop off and see if I won't handle it. Mm-hmm. 
The therapist holding her back too. All right. So anyway, no, ain't nothing gonna hold her back. So bars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So that was pretty much it. We got uh, next week, of course, to finish up. Um, other things uh, we know that they need to talk to Janelle and Quentin and get the facts on the fact that they're not really together. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, they're going to have the conversation. I'm sure with Phil and Aries to find out because again, y'all remember Aries was like. I'm choosing myself this mm-hmm. year. Um, and so that I can't think of what other things I would definitely be conversations for next week. No, I think that's going to be most of the show right there. Yeah. So. So we'll see. All we'll right. See. Y'all let us know if we miss anything. Let us know your thoughts. We'll see y'all next time. Have a great one. Be blessed. Bye.